HTTV in association with Absolute Warehouse Services. Broms, thank you for joining us. We announced back in February uh, that you were going to be the incoming head of football operations after a handover period from David Webb. Today is your first day in that role. Why did you decide that this role was the perfect one for you? Why did you go for this role? Um, I think um, it's always something I've wanted to do. Uh, long term, uh, you know, having the opportunity at Huddersfield being academy manager, I think it was the next sort of natural progression for me. Um, and it, yeah, I think, you know, being ambitious and at the, a club like Huddersfield where they want this structure, it seemed uh, the next progression for me. And as academy manager, you, you did some excellent work in revamping the academy through that transitional point. How yeah. will that help, that skill set help going into this head of football operations role? <laughs> Hugely. I think, you know, one, one, it gives me a real insight into the personalities and um, everyone at the club. So I've been here quite a long time now. So, you know, I've done various roles whilst being academy manager. So I've got a real good understanding of all the staff, uh, the structure, the owners, the club. Um, so, yeah, I think being a cadre manager has sort of been like a, an apprenticeship to this role. Mm -hmm. and, and I suppose with that, th there's a big side into knowing the club as a whole, like you alluded to there. You've yeah. been here for a number of years. You know how the club works. That must give you an extra kind of step up almost because for when you put in the strategy, the plans in place for the first team, you know however everything works. There's no like learning period in terms of the club. Yeah, I think um, I think it's a massive bonus. I think um, probably one that the club have looked at and thought, right, we need that sort of close knit, and the next step needs to be somebody who understands the club. Um, so I think that that's been a positive, and me being in the role as a kind of manager, it seems like the sort of next step for me with that understanding of real clarity of what the club want and the owners want. Um, you know, we've had quite a bit of change. So we have, we've got a new owner. Um, obviously, Dean ran the club how he ran it. We've got a new owner. And trying to implement all those ideas, being new, is difficult. So I think, yeah, it should be, it should be an advantage. And I think it's something the club have probably looked at and thought, yeah, this is... This, this should work. And since the academy changes, we've seen nine players from the academy make yeah. their first team debut. Obviously, you knowing the academy, how it works, the strategy involved with that helps tie everything together even further on the football side. Yeah, I think a big part of um, you know, the head of football role is to understand the academy. Um, you know, we, we did make a big change, which, you know, was, was publicised and, you know, Dean was a big driver of that. Phil's taken that forward and the general belief in the young players. So it's a huge strength for the club. Like you mentioned before, having nine debuts in just over two years mm -hmm. shows, one, that they believe in young, young players and two, that they've invested into doing that. Um, so you look at your Lewis O'Briens and your other players that are coming through and really having a big impact is a, it's yeah. a huge positive and something is part of the vision of the club. Um, so that, that, that will help. Obviously, I've got a really good understanding because once we restructured, I was at the beginning of that project. Um, I think, you know, the club have made a great choice in Emir and developing him to become the next academy manager so I think that's that's a real positive yeah and obviously now you're in the head of football operations role yeah what do you think that entails what's your understanding of that role because a lot of the wider fan base think yeah. that role is all about recruitment but that's yeah. just a small part isn't it yeah yeah I mean the the football side has grown so much you know, since I was playing and over the last say, 20 years of playing and coaching, the football side has developed into a business. So, you know, 
my role is to oversee all, all those departments and, and make sure the performance of those departments is at a really high level. Uh, you know, we're competing at the championship, which is one of the, you know, most competitive leagues. Um, and yeah, my role is not just recruitment, it's to make sure we maximise performance in, in every department. That's, that's included, you know, you've got coaching, uh, physical performance, you've got medical and recruitment's just, you've got the analyst side, the data side. So recruitment's just an arm of that. And I suppose with your experience, you, like we alluded to earlier in the academy manager role, the recruitment yeah. side, obviously you were a massive part of in terms of bringing players into that new academy setup. Coaching side, you've, you've coached the academy sides over the last few years as changes have happened. So you're well across all of those means. Yeah, I think, you know, you look at across most of the um, departments at, at the club that I'll be overseeing, I've got an understanding of pretty much all of them. I've seen, you know, I've experienced it as a player and as, as a coach and as a cadet manager. So, um, you know, I do, I feel, when I talk about it, I feel old, but, you know, I've still got the energy to, uh, so the experience that I've had is, is in football. Um, and I, I feel that's a strength. The bits I've obviously had to develop over the years is the sort of strategy and the leadership and management, uh, which is a huge part of, of, of this role. Um, but like you said, I feel really comfortable to be able to have an opinion and affect all, all the departments. Um, you know, not just the coaching side, um, and I feel feel that's a strength that I have had those experiences. Been lucky enough to have those at Huddersfield in the academy manager role, and hopefully I can use that experience to impact at first team level. And and obviously over the last few months, David Webb has had that time to to hand over what he's done at the club to you. How important have you found those last few months just to get to terms with the, with the new role? Yeah, I think it, it, it's been important um, to be able to work closely and, and, and observe and see the things that are going on. And, and uh, you know, my focus within the academy was, was full on. It's a hands-on job. So being able to have this opportunity just to learn some of the aspects that I'm going to have to work with has been important. Um, I think as a club, we, we're very good at um, involving everyone in that learning journey. So uh, as a cadre manager, I've always been able to sit on a lot of meetings that you might not get at other clubs. So I feel you know that, that has been a big help for me and hopefully I can keep that uh, development of recruiting staff and making sure they're developing and improving by... You know, I was I was exposed to a lot of meetings with you know Julian Winter, the ex chief exec, with the owners as academy manager, which has mm -hmm. which has helped as well. Yeah, uh, and day to day as head of football operations, how does that intertwine with what Danny and Nikki do? How does it relate? Yeah, it's a big it's a big part. I mean, my ultimately my job is, is to support. Uh, and to, to support the managers, to support all the staff, to, to maintain performance, um, to make, to give everyone the clarity of what we're trying to achieve. Uh -huh. So the communication between the owners and the managers is really important. Um, that, that generally goes through me. Um, working with Danny day to day in terms of what he needs. So. What does Danny need to be successful? Uh, he's obviously busy with all his coaching, managing the team. So, you know, ideally we create a really good relationship, which we've started well. Um, we've had a lot of meetings in terms of what he wants and obviously then working with the owners of the club to try and to piece all that together. Yeah, and I suppose that can link in again with then the academy setup. So when the, yeah. the last... EDT side come up to train with the first team, for example, or make that step up, then it's yeah. almost a seamless transition. Yeah, yeah. And that's the, you know, the, the reason why we made the change within the academy was to bring everything closer together. Um, so part of my role is making sure Danny's aware of all these players. 
uh, yeah. the emerging talent players, which he is. He, he's, he's got a passion for developing young players. Um, you know, he's got he's got a teaching background. He's been he's, he's experienced football manager, and he's got that passion both him and Nicky for you know mm -hmm. wanting to improve players. Um, you know, so that that is you know in a nutshell, just trying to support everyone. Uh, to communicate with everyone and, and, and try and make Huddersfield Town as successful as, as possible, really. Uh, and, and obviously, at this moment in time, it is a very difficult situation, not only in football, but obviously across the world. Yeah. For you, obviously, isolated, locked down at home. How have you been keeping in touch with Danny, Nicky, all the other heads of depart department on the football side to make sure that we are still a well, well oiled machine. Yeah, it's been, um, like I said, a, a different situation, uh, challenging, but one, you know, where we've been able to, you know, look at the positives. So I think the mindset at the club is, you know, how can we come out of this better than how we started? So no, no one's, you know, sat back thinking, oh, we can't do anything. It's been really proactive. I've had, you know, regular contact with Danny, meetings with him about how we can improve everything. So I believe this this time, this period has given us an opportunity to look at the detail of what we're doing. So how we work with the players, how we work with the staff, how do we want it to look um, once we come out of this period. So for us, it's been a real positive because you don't generally, because football's that fast paced, get to spend this much time with the manager. So yeah. creating that relationship with him and Nick has been fantastic. Being able to, you know, spend time over these these platforms. So Danny's uh, now an, an IT whiz is saying. So <laughs> we, we've all we've all actually improved uh, our IT skills, which has been one positive. And and like I said, spending being able to spend that time with each other. Uh, because, as I mentioned before, football is that fast pace and you're concentrating on games. It's difficult to sit down. So that, that has been a positive. And, and being around the staff that want to improve what we're doing. Yeah, 100%. Like you said, in, in football, like you say, it's very fast paced. And then yeah. the summer comes around and the focus immediately switches. In, in this period, there's more of a chance to sit down, discuss ideas. Yeah strategy look at what we've done yeah. but for you in your role as well starting yeah. that must be really really important just to to gauge everyone's thoughts and to put a strategy in place almost yeah massively important I think you know we've got um Phil who you know is really really passionate about the club and you know wants to move move the club forward from Dean's sort of time so you know we've still got the support of Dean within that role but mm -hmm. Phil's got his own his own ideas and his vision for the club which is fantastic to be able to you know spend a bit more time with him um, and then also work with Danny to be able to try and bring that to life so yeah I think a lot of people will be thinking well what what types of things are we doing within this time at football there's a lot going on behind the scenes particularly with you know the players and the communication with players communication with the staff um, so it's been it's been interesting, and it's been it's been nice to see the individuals that have been really proactive within this period. And, and obviously, like I said earlier, it is a difficult situation in terms of the football side. Um, in in this period, it will have a massive knock on effect for clubs, not only in the championship but all across the football league. Yeah. How do you how do you foresee? The future of football being impacted and changed because of this? Yeah, I think there'll be a big change. I think, um, you know, the financial impact on the clubs is going to be huge, which I think a lot of people are talking about. Um, you know, the, to be confirmed in terms of not playing in front of crowds is going to affect a yeah. lot of clubs, you know, um, so financially it, it, there's going to be a big change. Um, strategies for us in terms of players coming in, uh, signings, you know, what, what does that look like now within, you know, the guidance that we're going to be giving? When is that going to be? 
it's changed for a lot of clubs. So these are the discussions that are happening, um, you know, with Phil, with, with the owners. So, um, yeah, the, the face of football is going to change. And I think that that's all industry as well. So football is going to have to cut its cloth a little bit. Um, and until we're given more detail in terms of from the government, how we return to play and when those things are, the longer it goes on, the probably bigger those problems become. Um, yeah. So f fingers crossed we can cross, sorry, that we can get back to so, some sort of football soon. Yeah. Yeah. It, it's, especially for you starting this role, um, it, it must be a really interesting period for you just to see yeah. how things are chopping and changing, but also very difficult in that aspect because you're just getting used to the new role and then all of a sudden yeah. things can change daily almost. Yeah, yeah, I agree. It's, it's been tough because, um, like that, the question you just asked me, I don't, I don't particularly know the answer to. So yeah. you've got a whole football club that's maybe looking to you for some answers, but until we have the clarity from the governing bodies and the government, it's really difficult to give those answers. Um, so like I said, we, we've tried to be just really positive, stay in contact with staff and um, try look to how it might look when we come back. Um, yeah, so di difficult times. Trying to be, trying to be positive, um, but yeah, there will, like we have mentioned just previous, there will be a lot of change. Yeah, uh, and and just finally, with you and your family, are you all well, safe? Yeah, good. Yeah, it's been. Uh, I think my kids are really enjoying homeschooling. So, um, and good it's, teacher. Yeah. Pardon. Good teacher. Um, I, well, I'd like to say so, seeing as I'm <laughs> <laughs> supposed to be a, a coach and all those things. But yeah, um, two, luckily, two girls that are probably a lot, well, definitely miles more intelligent than me and studious. So they, they do the work diligently. And yeah, it's been, it's been nice spending time with them. Fantastic. Thank you very much for... Uh, giving us this time just to discuss your new role and um, good luck. Cheers, Adam. Thank you.